leave that. I'm not really retiring from work. I'm just transitioning between jobs. So that's the second group. Uh, and, and, then, and then there's a third group that I fall into, which is uh, start off like the second group, which is I didn't want to do it, but then I kind of got my arm twisted. And, and uh, so anyway, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm here as, as it got closer and closer. It's, uh, it was more and more like, yeah, this, this really was a good idea. This is kind of like, uh, I, I hope all of you have this opportunity to, to look out across the crowd and see like this cross section of your life from, from the beginning to the current day. And, and that's, it's like that old show, uh, This Is Your Life. So I'm glad I did opt for the, um, for, for option three to, to, to do this. Anyway. So it is my ceremony. I can, you know, it's my party. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> so, so what I'm going to do here is, I don't want it to be about me, but you know, you're all here. I enjoy having you all here in my presence. So I'm going to turn this around and make it all about you. I'm going to talk about you guys. And I, just to be organized, we're going to put it in uh, chronological order. So we'll start from the very beginning. We'll start with mom and dad. My mom's here today. Uh, my, my father, unfortunately, uh, is no longer with us, but um, my mother is here today. Uh, it all starts with mom and dad. Um, I, you know, my mom and dad set me up for success, and uh, you know, it's still me, whatever, whatever it's up. Um, but thanks, mom. Um, my one of my favorite memories of mom was uh, I was uh, eight years old, and my dad was in Vietnam, and she was raising us. And I had got this model Starship Enterprise. I was building models when I was a kid. And it had these lights on it. Put two AA batteries in there, and you, you build the model, and you put the wires in there, and you hook them up to the batteries, and the lights are supposed to work. And I was in tears because the lights didn't come on. <laughs> and it was 11 o'clock at night, and I was running up to Mom. Said, Mom, the lights don't work. Mom doesn't know anything about electrical engineering, but doggone it, Mom got into a screwdriver, fiddled with the wires, and eventually the lights came on. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Um, we moved to Maryland when I was in fourth grade, and I also have memories of being on the seawall out that way. Uh, we go uh, chicken necking for um, uh, crabs, and uh, I do remember one day at the end of the day, my mom was getting in the car. Looking at Bancroft Hall, it wouldn't be great if you came here someday. And I did. Uh, uh, my sister Lisa. I'll move on to, I'll move on to my siblings. Um, <laughs> on induction day, June 6, 1977, um, went to uh, Halsey Fieldhouse and Got my bag of stuff in my first uniform and marching around through the yard and not sworn in yet, but my sister passed me this note on a napkin telling me how proud she was of me. I still have that thing. I found it in my basement last week. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the way I plan this to go. <laughs> My brother Tim, my brother Tim, he's, he's an amazing guy. He enlisted in the Navy as an E-1, worked his way up to E-7, he made chief, which is uh, quite an achievement. Um, and then he made, uh, he got commissioned as an LDO and went up and uh, retired as a lieutenant commander. Uh, he made a lot, I think he passed through a lot tighter wickets than I ever had to pass through my career. I, I appreciate that, and uh, thank you for being one of my side today. Um, my brother Greg is here. Uh, my brother Greg fought the family trend. He went army, not Navy. <laughs> he was a Apache uh, <laughs> helicopter mechanic, right? Cobra. Cobra, I'm Cobra. sorry, uh, in uh, 101st Airborne. Got that right. Uh, he was in the Desert Storm. He was in some interesting places in Desert Storm. Uh, I got letters from him in Desert Storm, telling me some of the cool stuff that was going on, and 
And oh, by the way, don't tell mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was my family. So moving on chronologically, I got to the Naval Academy. Um, very first day of classes at the Naval Academy, Professor Ted Benack, SM-161, Computer Calculus 1, and there's a guy in my class named Keith Bauman. And Keith Bauman and I uh, have been interacting ever since. Uh, we, were, we were classmates here at the Naval Academy. Uh, I got to Pogi first, and then Keith showed up shortly thereafter because uh, he, we started off in new school together, but uh, he started his family a little bit before I did. He got, he got a little bit of the light. Uh, our our uh, careers were parallel. We were on Pogi together. Uh, my fondest memories of uh, Keith, I have two. One was the, uh, the six month Westpac weight loss contest, oh where uh, to raise money, remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to raise money, the ship collected money from anyone who wanted to join the weight loss contest. Yeah, we got nothing to do uh, for six month deployment. Let's 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 do something positive and shed some pounds. So Keith and I thought we were gonna, let's throw this thing. Let's let's fork out and eat as much as we can before the opening day of the weight loss contest. <laughs> and then we're gonna we're just gonna we're gonna bulk up and we're just gonna shoot down and we're gonna we're gonna throw the thing. So we, we did, we ate a whole, we ate for a couple of weeks and we drank as much water as we could on weigh-in day and um, uh, I, think, I think I lost five pounds the very first day after we ate. <laughs> so, and so I, I bulked up to more than I'd ever weighed in my life and in the end I didn't lose any weight at all but, uh, but it, was, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> the contest was, weighed, uh, was won by an earnest uh, man who really did do a, a, a decent job of checking sports. The, the other, the other, my other favorite uh, memory of Keith is uh, he put together, he organized, I think four or five of us junior officers as a, as a, as a these doo-wop group called the Skids or something like that. <laughs> he, was, he was in the uh, league club here and so he organized this thing and uh, uh, video that still exists today. And I, I, I played that to my students from time to time here I can't quite charge out of watching, watching this program. Um, okay, so, so uh, let me see. After Pogi, we were at Charleston together. We were engineers on Old Boomers. He was on Ben Franklin Gold. I was on John C. Calvin Gold. Uh, when um, Working Hugo came through, we were on opposite schedules. So he had to go sortie and get out of town, and I got to stay behind and sort of uh, hold down the fort. Uh, my favorite memory from that time was when I was at sea and he was in port. Uh, we pulled in Port Canaveral and I called home. I decided to talk to Christine for a while, so I called home and I got no answer. The phone just rang and rang and rang. I had no answer whatsoever. So I'm wondering what's that's interesting. I called several times, no answer. So you know, Bauman were our best friend there, so I called uh, Bauman's house and Linda answered. And I said, hello, Linda, this is Jack. I'm having a hard time getting a hold of Christine. What's, what's going on? And Linda's like, uh, um, uh, she doesn't, want to, she doesn't want to tell me. I said, what's going on? And Linda goes, she's, she's moving. <laughs> I go, moving? Where? What, what do you mean she's moving? I thought, no, she's, um, she's leaving me. She's, she's decided she's had enough of this and she's leaving me. So she goes, oh, she goes Jack, please, it's not what you think. Don't tell, don't tell Christine I told you, but she's trying to surprise you. She's decided she wants to move into a new house and this is going to be a surprise. When you get back from sea, she's going to pick you up and drive you into a driveway you've never seen before. <laughs> please don't tell Christine. <laughs> so, uh, so Christine comes down to Kings Bay and, and um, picks me up and she goes, you know, honey, we got a lot of things to do when you're home, you know, our lease is expiring. And, um, I don't know if we're going to stay in the new house, in the old house, or move into a new house, and I'm just sort of, yeah, you're right, we got some work to do. Goes, yeah, yeah. And she's looking at me, and I'm trying to suppress the smile, but finally I just couldn't hold it anymore. She slapped me, like, how did you find out? <laughs> But anyway, uh, Keith and I moved on. We were, we were exos together in Pearl Harbor on 
Los Angeles class around the packs. We were CEOs together on the uh, Ohio class of Leeds and Kings Bay. Anyway, I'm still in my Naval Academy phase. Uh, halfway through the Naval Academy phase, I was introduced to Christine by a, by a teammate on the sailing team. And I, I was down there during the summer. And then I came back up here and we started exchanging letters more seriously. Seriously enough that I had to go down there for Christmas and visit Christine. And, and that was the first time that the, you get to that point where you got to meet the parents. And, and that's when I first met uh, my father-in-law, David Triggers, retired senior chief bureaucrat for state. Um, a very classy gentleman. I don't know that I would have let them make sure them sniffing around my daughter. <laughs> but you did, and you were very cool about it. I appreciate, I appreciate you accepting me, and you have been uh, a wonderful, wonderful father-in-law. You could have been more well. Um, and uh, he's joined with his wife, Jane. Jane, nice to have you here today. And Christine's uh, sister, Kathy, who, when I did drive down to Pensacola, during whatever opportunity I could get, second class and first class year, I usually made it an overnighter. I'd leave here as soon as I could after finals, drive all night long there the next morning, usually kind of punchy and ready to just be goofy and inevitably it ended up with Kathy and I sitting along to some Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young food or something like that. So I, I, I still remember this. Thanks, <laughs> Kathy, after I got, got out of my car. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Emeritus Robert Moyer, I think he's here today. Uh, we interacted briefly while I was a midshipman. I was not a systems engineer, I was a marine engineer, but uh, when I was here I joined this fledgling engineering honor society thing and, and uh, I was digging through papers in my basement. When I got here to teach, I knew the name Robert DeMore, but I couldn't figure out why I knew the name Robert DeMore. And I found this piece of paper and it, he was one of the co-founders of this thing that ultimately became the tall beta pie chapter engineering honor society here that I am the officer representative for many years. But, uh, so I did briefly interact with, uh, with Bob. Later we talk elbow to elbow through several courses and several semesters of the year, and I, and I appreciate your, your mentorship, Bob. Um, the McGill clan, uh, Julie McGill, uh, married my father when I was, well, met my father while I was in the ship, and uh, married him in 84, 3, sorry. Um, four, my dad brought four children to that marriage and she brought eight. So we've got this huge local family. We're almost all here in the Washington DC area. Uh, we've got uh, Julie and Dawn, Larry, Karen, Kathy, Pam, Lori, Sherry, and Sharon. I need the script to get through it. Um, you guys have always been loving and you've always been thoughtful and supportive and you've always been a lot of fun and uh, you're always there whenever you need something. Um, I talked about whether or not I should have done this ceremony or not. I know that if I had not done the ceremony, they would have done what happened at my 50th birthday when I said I don't want a big deal about my 50th birthday. <laughs> we had a little 50th birthday celebration with me, Christine, and the kids. And then a week later, a flash mob showed up at my house <laughs> for the real 50th birthday, courtesy of the McGill girls. And the girls want to be here. Okay, so I graduated from uh, the academy and I went on to Pogi. I've already talked about this in our time on the Pogi. Jack was my first boss and I talked about him a little bit. Um, the order certainly had a lot of character. Probably the, probably the tightest order I've ever served in. Um, as, as an indication of how much character we had, we talked a little bit about the names. You exposed my nickname, but I'm going to give the courtesy of not exposing your nickname. <laughs> But I will, I will read a list of nicknames so you can figure out which one is him. <laughs> Bert, Ernie, Biddles, Blade, By the Book, Cranium, Pal Hal, Geek, Ivan, as in I've been a brown noser, <laughs> um, Jojo, Troll, and a few others that I, I actually can't mention here. <laughs> All right. Um, Keith is one of those also, but I won't expose him either. <laughs> Thanks for um, Greg Vaughn is here today. I uh, met first when you were uh, in here on Parchy, and I uh, knew Jack on Pogi, and uh, we were classmates at MIT Woods Hall. Thank you for being here today. I bump into Greg from time to time in my 
time in the AUV business, autonomous and motor vehicle business. Um, I finished the pogey, I went to Massachusetts to go to grad school. And that's where we ran into the Levines and the Bryans, um, Pete and Michelle and Dave and Cheryl. Um, they, we know Pete and Michelle because Christine worked with them as a medical technologist at Bowman Hospital. We had a lot of good times over the years. We went sailing together, skiing together, tucking in for meeting together. Uh, we even stood on a picket line together one time when I was a lieutenant protesting uh, for more pay for a medical technologist. <laughs> and I was on television. <laughs> and I wondered if that might affect my naval career. <laughs> but you guys have been great friends, and they're here from Massachusetts today. And for both my chiefs of command in Kings Bay, they came all the way down to Georgia for that. So I, 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 I very appreciate it. Um, okay, then beyond there, I went to uh, the Naval, I'm sorry, the uh, Nuclear Propulsion Examining Board where I first met Doug Johnson. For two years, I called him XO because he was the executive officer of the board. And then, because of the conditions on board USS Indianapolis, when I got orders there as XO and he got orders there as CEO, he called me XO for the next two years. And um, he gets, as Jack said, he gets more credit for the miraculous turnaround on board. It was easily the most challenging, the most grueling couple of years of my naval career, but it, it all came out great. And Doug, you were, you were the steady hand. It really got tough. Um, Doug's here all the way from Idaho, so you get the award for best travel. <laughs> and uh, Doug's wife, Maggie, is the ultimate um, COXO wife and mentor. Uh, she helped Christine be the XO wife, and Christine was the XO wife. And, and was pretty rare when she was the CEO's wife. And then uh, from Indianapolis, I went to the Pentagon with joint staff, and that's where I first ran across uh, Captain Retired Jeff Hughes. Thanks for being here today, Jeff. Uh, I was on the joint staff. He worked for the uh, Secretary of Defense, but we worked similar issues, so we first got to know each other there. And then we got to, um, to uh, Wyoming, and lo and behold, I'm the Gulf of CEO, and Jeff is the new CEO. Um, I'll get to Kent Wasser in a minute, but uh, when I first got here, Kent Wasser asked me, when he found out I'd been on a missile submarine, he asked me, hey, did you ever shoot off any of those nuclear missiles? <laughs> well, Jeff actually got to shoot off the nuclear missiles. Not with the bombs on them, but he actually got to launch some missiles, and, and uh, I, was, I was very interested in that. But, uh, I'm glad you here today. I finished my uh, career, my uh, submarine career, at the 20-year mark on Wyoming, and then I went from a military professor. I went off to um, uh, Monterey for uh, graduate school, and I, uh, uh, I ran into, uh, I think I ran into two out of my free side boys, uh, Joe Watkins, Captain Joe Watkins. Uh, we had similar courses. We actually designed a bicycle pedal crank together. Remember that one? Did the stress analysis on a bicycle pedal crank. Lots of the same professors. We did some laser thing with uh, piezoelectric actuators. And, uh, Joe is a uh, Joe is an outstanding permanent military professor. He is he is promoted to captain as a PMP. He is promoted academically to associate professor as a PMP. He's got a thriving research program here in the Forties. Many civilian professors. So I'm very honored that you're here as one of my uh, side boys. I haven't forgotten the time that we went camping in Yosemite, my family. Halfway through the uh, Central Valley, the van broke down, and I called USA for a tow. USA would only tow me to the next town. They towed me to Gilroy, California. And then at that point, I needed to get the rest of the way home. We had a van full of uh, camping gear and the whole family. And I said, Joe, I need a favor. I need you to come drive to Gilroy. He had company at the time. He had, he had visitors from out of town. And Joe got in that Ford Taurus and drove to Kilroy and collected the stuff, as much of us and our stuff as we could into the Taurus and rescued us abroad. So I, I, I'll never forget that. Joe. Um, Ed Tucholsky, another another of my PMP buddies. I first ran across Ed at NPS uh, Naval Postgraduate School. I was just getting there. He was just finishing, and I was so in awe of that signature sheet. He was just finishing his. He had all the his uh, PhD had all the signatures on it, and I was so envious. I, I actually offered him hundred thousand dollars for that piece of paper, <laughs> rather, than, rather than endure the whole doctoral program. Ed would not surrender it. So thank you for being here today, Ed.
And then uh, Lloyd Brown, a superior PMP who also has promoted militarily to captain promoted. find somebody to go back to California. I said, I don't have money to send you to California college, but through sheer determination, she found a way to become a USC trustee scholar. She got a, got a free ride through her hard work. Good job, sweetie. Stay ambitious and work for what you want to achieve. Well, as for me, I've been on active duty from age 17 until however old I am today. <laughs> Some would say, wow, Jack gave his best years to the Navy. And that might be true, but I would turn that around. I'd say the Navy gave me my best years. Um, they gave me my own submarine at one point and some appearances on TV that from time to time still appear on TV. I've been to cool places. I've done cool things that I still can't discuss. Uh, I've been from uh, 89 degrees north to 45 degrees south. And I've been to all the longitudes except for a little band of 10 degrees. Um, I've met historical figures along the way. The one I remember the most is the time that Archie and I went to go brief um, the Secretary of Defense on one of the Pony's wonderful appointments. And uh, so Archie's doing the briefing, and I come in with all the slides, and, and all we're missing is an extension cord. So none other than Colin Powell, one star, is scrambling to go find me an extension cord. <laughs> but he, he obviously wanted the bigger things. Um, so, anyway, so what am I going to do now, now that I'm off active duty? Make money. Make money. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, that's a question everybody asks of military retirees. So, what are you going to do now? And so, uh, I'm, I'm happy to announce that in three weeks I'm going back to work. Um, I'm going to take the first 20 years of my career where I. Position devoted to submarines and learned Those about submarines, so and I'm going to combine it with the next 12 years where I got my PhD and worked in uh, systems engineering, and uh, I'm going to work in the systems integration branch of the Navy Strategic Systems Programs Office. I'm going to be working on the Ohio Replacement Program submarine. So I'm doing submarine stuff, and I'm doing systems engineering stuff. We'll be working on systems integration, we'll be working on um, test programs. Uh, that go along with, uh, with uh, bringing a whole new submarine online, and I am uh, very excited about uh, this opportunity. She commuted to D.C. until she retired not that long ago, so I know I can do it. So anyway, I started a few weeks. Uh, we're going to take a family cruise uh, between now and then, and then, uh, and then we'll, be, we'll be busy. So there's only two things I want to cover before we wrap things up here. Um, I said my initial impulse was I didn't want to do the, well, all the pomp and circumstance, but I'm going to make one minor exception to that because there are times in life when you wish you could get a do over and you generally don't, but here's one chance where I'm going to get a chance to do a do over. And it really wasn't of my own doing, but twice in my career I had a, a, a sea tour where I, I had success in the sea tour. And at the time I was awarded, at the time, the highest award that I had been presented. But in both occasions, I went off to grad school, and those awards were late in coming. His expertise in weapons and sonar systems contributed directly to the excellent results achieved during an exercise torpedo firing in 1985, and the ship's receipt of the 1985 Commander Submarine Group 5 Anti-Submarine Warfare A Award. His superior performance as officer of the deck contributed directly to two highly successful Western Pacific deployments. His technical excellence, attention to detail, and extraordinary dedication made a significant and lasting impact on the ship's excellent performance. Lieutenant Nicholson's outstanding meritorious service, initiative, and selfless devotion to duty reflected great credit upon himself. 
and we're in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service.